Hello viewers, in the previous session uh, we have proved uh, the following uh, theorem, the, the, this theorem that uh, if f of z is analytic at z naught and f of z naught equals w naught okay, and that f of z minus w naught has order n at z naught. Okay. Under these circumstances, uh, if epsilon is positive, then there is a corresponding delta positive such that uh, all the values in the delta neighborhood of w naught are uh, taken exactly n times by f in the epsilon neighborhood of z. Okay. So, a picture for this uh, is definitely in order. Okay. So, um, here is an epsilon neighborhood of z naught. Uh, so, this is the domain okay, and this is the range. Okay. So, here is w naught equals f of z naught okay. and um, f of f takes z naught to uh, w naught. Okay. So, now uh, if this epsilon is sufficiently small, okay, though then um, also the 0 of f of z minus w naught is of order n, then uh, each point in this neighborhood. Okay, so, let us call a, let us pick an a in this delta neighborhood, this is a delta neighborhood of w naught. Okay. So, each point a is assumed n times here, there are n points here counting multiplicity uh, such that f of z is equal to a uh, for these points uh, in the epsilon for these points in the epsilon neighborhood okay that's what this theorem asserts okay so a remark is in order here we can further assume that uh, the multiplicity of uh, of assuming a at each of these points is actually one what i mean by that is remark so, I will remark that uh, we can further assume that uh, the multiplicity okay, or I will say yeah, the multiplicity of the 0 of f of z minus a okay, uh, in this epsilon neighborhood. So, I am referring to the theorem under the conditions of the theorem okay, in this epsilon neighborhood of uh, z naught okay, um, okay, uh, is 1 at every 0 of f of z minus a. Okay. What I mean by that is if z 1 uh, is a 0 of f of z minus a i e f of z 1 is equal to a. Okay, where z 1 belongs to B uh, z naught epsilon. Okay, so, z 1 is a solution to f of z equals a and z 1 belongs to the epsilon neighborhood around uh, z naught. Okay, then uh, the multiplicity of 0 of f of z minus a okay, at z 1 can be assumed to be 1 or it can be said to be a simple 0 okay, where uh, oh, there is an assumption uh, where a is not equal to w naught. Okay. So, for uh, for anything other than w naught. So, if I pick any a here, I am referring to this picture here. Now, if I pick any a here, which is not w naught itself, 
okay then uh, then each of these points which hits uh, a okay uh, is a zero to f of z minus a okay and then um, this the the multiplicity of the zero uh, at at that point z1 of f of z minus a can be assumed to be 1 okay why is it so well firstly uh, uh, this okay why the answer is as follows uh, this is vacuously true if f is a constant function right if f is a constant function there is no other a that we can pick uh, other than w naught because all the all the uh, points are mapped to this w naught itself it's a constant function okay so we can assume that f is a non constant function if f is non constant we can do the following uh, notice that f prime okay f prime of uh, f prime is not identically the 0 function. Why? Well, because uh, if f is analytic, uh, f prime is analytic okay, and uh, f prime identically 0 on an open set uh, gives you that f is constant on uh, the components uh, on which f is analytic. Okay. So, f prime is not, not identically 0, if f prime is identically 0, f is constant on in the ball at least. Okay. So, since f is non constant okay, and since f prime is uh, an analytic function, the zeros of f prime are isolated by the identity theorem if you wish. Okay. So, uh, since f prime is analytic as well okay in in the in the in the epsilon ball if you wish f of z naught sorry b of z naught epsilon um, the zeros of f prime are isolated okay so um, in particular uh, there is a there is a um, let us say delta 1 positive such that uh, f prime of z is not equal to 0 in uh, b z naught uh, delta 1. Okay. So, even if f prime is 0 at z naught uh, f there is a small neighborhood around z naught such that f prime is not 0 in uh, I should say this is the deleted neighborhood b prime uh, z naught delta 1. Okay. So, i e this is i e for, for uh, 0 strictly less than mod z minus z naught strictly less than delta 1. Okay. So, that is the deleted neighborhood uh, of z naught. Okay. So, um, what this gives us is that uh, uh, then con considering b prime or b prime z naught delta 1 which is an open set okay, and using uh, Taylor's theorem if you wish. Okay, uh, we can say that since f prime of z 1 is not equal to 0, well here z 1 is the 0 of f of z minus a. Okay. So, we can say that since f prime of z 1 is not equal to 0 um, for a solution z 1 okay, to f of z is equal to a, where a belongs to the uh, delta neighborhood of w naught okay, uh, and a not equal to w naught. Okay. The 0 of f of z minus a at z 1 okay, is simple. 
you expand f of z minus a f of z minus a is also an analytic function. So, you expand f of z minus a around z 1. Okay. So, since f prime of z 1 is non 0, uh, you have that the, the 0 at z 1 of f of z minus a has to be simple. Okay. That is by the Taylor's expansion for f of z minus a around z 1. Okay. So, uh, that says that um, yeah, so these zeros can be assumed to be uh, simple. Okay, the zeros of f of z minus a can be assumed to be simple. Okay, so what that is telling us is that here once again the picture. Okay, here is uh, here is w naught, here is z naught. If I pick any uh, z which gets mapped onto some a in a delta neighborhood of uh, w naught, this is the delta neighborhood of w naught, this is the epsilon neighborhood of z naught as in the theorem. Okay. And if f of z is equal to a, okay, then there is a small neighborhood of this z such that uh, z is the only, uh, well I do not need a neighborhood here, this is a. Okay. So, in this small neighborhood here, in this small neighborhood here of z, z is the only uh, solution to f of z is equal to a. Okay. So, if this is z 1, uh, so then f of z 1 is equal to a and f of z is not equal to a in the hashed neighborhood, hashed as in this, this picture, this, this picture neighborhood. Uh, now, we are uh, ready to prove the open mapping theorem as a corollary to the theorem we had uh, last time. So, a non constant analytic function okay, maps open sets to open sets. Okay, i.e. Okay, so stated up in another way, let f be an analytic function. Okay, uh, non-constant. Let f be a non-constant analytic function. Function. Okay, uh, on an open set G, then f of G is open in C, G is open open set in C, then f of G is open set in C as well. Okay, so, this is another way of stating the same. All right. So, uh, what is the proof? Well, the proof follows from uh, the theorem above. Okay. So, what what do we need to show? Let let f be a non constant analytic function on an open set G. We have to show that f of G is open, f of capital G is open. Okay. So, let A belong to G. Okay. Uh, and uh, then f of a belongs to f of g. So, we want to show that there is a delta positive such that b of f of a delta is contained in f of g uh, and every, every uh, w belongs to b of f of a uh, delta okay, uh, has a pre image in G y i f. Okay, so, this is what we want to show. So, uh, this comes directly from the previous theorem. So, uh, by the above theorem, okay, by choosing sufficiently small epsilon. Okay, 
okay. uh, there is a delta positive such that every value uh, of b of f of a well f of a itself is assumed by a by by f at the point a okay so b of f of a delta okay uh, is assumed the same number of times uh, inside uh, a circle of radius epsilon okay around a okay so f of a itself like i remarked uh, is is assumed by f at a okay so uh, all the values in this ball are assumed by f uh, at least once okay so that is the point uh, so uh, b of f of a delta okay is contained in the image of uh, the ball of epsilon radius around a okay uh, via f okay so this is the point and then this is contained in uh, f of g so so f is an open map okay so that completes the proof of this theorem uh, and uh, that's a very important result uh, we will see that the maximum modulus principle follows as a consequence there is a remark following this corollary okay if the uh, zero of uh, f of z minus w naught okay uh, is simple at z naught okay in the above theorem okay uh, i e n is equal to 1 Okay, so, so in this theorem here in the first theorem that I quoted. Okay, so, if n is equal to 1, if the 0 of f of z minus w naught is simple, okay, then uh, there is a 1 to 1 correspondence okay, uh, between an open set open set of f of z minus sorry uh, the, uh, between open set of uh, b z naught uh, epsilon okay so uh, between an open subset rather subset of this ball okay uh, and uh, the disk b uh, f of z naught namely w naught uh, delta right because each each value in b w naught delta is assumed exactly one time by uh, by some point in uh, b z naught epsilon okay so there is some open subset here by the open mapping theorem we can say that uh, an open set is carried to this here okay and then so uh, an open set um, open subset of b z naught epsilon is uh, is um, is mapped in a one to one fashion to b z naught delta okay that's a remark okay and then uh, we will see some uh, some more results following from this important theorem we, we saw in the last session okay so uh, here is a case where we are assuming n is equal to 1 Okay, so, here is a, a proposition let uh, g be an open set okay, and let f be uh, analytic and 1 to 1. Okay, in g. Then f is conformal in g here 
here is the proof in detail. Okay. So, f is 1 to 1 implies f is locally 1 to 1. What I mean by locally is that uh, there is a neighborhood around every point where it is 1 to 1. If f prime of a is some arbitrary point in G. Okay. If f prime of a is 0 for some a belongs to G, okay, then uh, given a small uh, epsilon positive, okay, uh, there exists a delta positive such that uh, f takes every value uh, in B f of a uh, epsilon or sorry delta okay, uh, at least twice in B a epsilon. That is because if f prime of a is 0, then the order of 0 of f of z minus uh, f of a at a is at least 2. So, by the remark earlier we can assume that uh, in a small enough neighborhood of a we can assume that the number of uh, number of zeros of f of z minus uh, some w okay, uh, is uh, simple okay, uh, or is equal to 1 okay, uh, or the multiplicity of such zeros is equal to 1. Okay. So, what that means is that every value in b f of a delta has to be taken at least twice in b a epsilon. Okay, uh, in in B a epsilon. Okay, so that is a contradiction since uh, f is locally one to one. Okay, so that says so f prime of a is not equal to zero for any a belongs to G. So next uh, we have another. Uh, consequence that we can speak. Okay. Here is another proposition. So, uh, let once again here we are uh, dealing with 1 to 1 analytic functions. Let G be an open set okay. and let F be uh, analytic and 1 to 1. in G, uh, then f inverse is analytic in f of G. Okay. So, firstly uh, note that since f is 1 to 1 okay, on G, f inverse from f of g to g okay, is well defined. Since f is 1 to 1. Further as a consequence of the open mapping theorem, we can note that f inverse is firstly uh, continuous. Okay. So, uh, f inverse is continuous, here is the argument. Okay. So, uh, let so what I will show is the inverse image of an open set in G. Okay. So, here is f inverse from f of G to G. If I pick an open set here, I will show that the inverse image of that is open in f of G. Okay. So, let V be uh, an open set in G. Okay, then f of v is open in f of g because of the open mapping theorem okay, by the open mapping theorem. Okay. So, um, also notice that f of v is f inverse inverse of uh, 
it is f inverse inverse of v. What I mean by that is it is the inverse image uh, under f inverse of the set v. Okay, since this is because f is 1 to 1 okay, is 1 to 1 correspondence more so it is a bijection okay, 1 to 1 correspondence from v to f of v. So, the inverse image of f inverse uh, of v is nothing but f of v. Okay. So, um, so, f inverse inverse, so f inverse uh, inverse of v okay, uh, is open in f of g okay. and hence that, cell, that tells that f inverse is continuous. We have shown that the inverse image of an arbitrary open set in G is open in f inverse in f of G and okay, uh, under f inverse. So, f inverse is continuous. Let A belong to G and f of A okay, and let f of A is equal to B. Then, uh, f inverse of b is equal to a. Okay. So, I want to show that uh, f inverse is analytic at f of a and uh, every point in f of g looks like f of a. So, uh, I will be done if I show that f inverse is analytic at the point f of a by previous proposition. We have shown that uh, since f is 1 to 1, We have shown that once we have a one to one function on an open set, uh, f prime is non zero or f is conformal. So, f prime of f inverse of b, namely f prime at a is non zero. Okay. Now, uh, here is where I will actually use uh, continuity, which I showed separately here okay, uh, of f inverse. Okay. So, now since the limit as z goes to b of f inverse of z is equal to f inverse of b. Okay. So, this is why I need continuity in the first place and then I can show differentiability in the standard order okay, by uh, continuity of f inverse. Okay. So, uh, the limit as z goes to b of f inverse of z minus f inverse of b by z minus b. This is the uh, difference quotient and the limit of the difference quotient. Okay. So, I want to show that this limit exists and, and then I will be able to continue, conclude that f inverse is differentiable. Okay. So, this is equal to the limit as z goes to b of f inverse of z minus f inverse of b. I am preserving the numerator and I am writing the denominator as f inverse of f of f inverse of z minus f of f inverse of b. Okay. So, this is equal to, uh, so what I will do is, I will say this is limit as f inverse of z goes to f inverse of b limit as z goes to b is the same as limit as f inverse of z goes to f inverse of b, okay? uh, because f is 1 to 1 and uh, f inverse is continuous. Okay? So, this is 1 divided by f of f inverse of z minus f of f inverse of b divided by f inverse of z minus f inverse of b. So, notice that the uh, denominator um, is nothing but the differentiation of f at f inverse of p okay? and we know that is non zero. So, this is equal to 1 by f prime of f inverse of uh, b. Okay? So, this makes sense, this thing makes sense because uh, you know f, f, f is conformal at f inverse of p. Okay? So, f inverse is as a conclusion, we can say that f inverse is analytic 
at p ie f of a and since f is on to f of g okay f of capital g every point in f of capital g looks like f of a for some a in g okay so f inverse is essentially analytic on all of f of g okay so that completes uh, the proof of this proposition so in the case that f is 1 to 1 we can say more we can uh, on an open set g we can say more we can say that f is conformal on that open set we can also say that the inverse function is uh, analytic okay so these are two conclusions we can make uh, from the theorem that i wrote uh, at the beginning of the session okay uh, in the case where n is equal to 1 all right so uh, next we will see that uh, we can uh, deduce the maximum principle okay uh, as a consequence of the open mapping theorem okay so theorem the maximum principle So, if f of z is analytic, and non constant, in a region G, okay, then its uh, absolute value modulus of f of z okay, has no maximum uh, in g. Okay. So, we want g to be region then modulus of f of z has no maximum in g. Okay. So, um, we stated the maximum principle before okay, in a slightly different version uh, and there I remarked that it can be directly proved using uh, the local version of the maximum modulus uh, principle that we have already seen. Okay. So, but we wanted to take a different route, uh, we wanted to prove the open mapping theorem first and deduce this theorem as a corollary to that. Okay. So, um, there is a uh, uh, there is a merit to it uh, this shows that uh, i mean this process of showing the maximum modulus principle uh, tells you more about the local property of the analytic functions okay that uh, that open sets are actually mapped to open sets okay so uh, you cannot have that uh, the interior point is mapped onto uh, some boundary point okay uh, as a consequence of open mapping theorem Okay. So, uh, hence the maximum modulus principle. Okay. So, let us prove this theorem using the open mapping theorem. So, here is the proof belong to uh, G, okay. uh, then uh, B z naught r is contained in G for some r positive. Okay. Uh, if w naught is equal to f of z naught okay uh, then there is a delta positive okay such that b of f of z naught is delta is contained in f of b of z naught r by the earlier theorem okay which we had okay so um, so modulus of f of z not clearly okay uh, cannot be uh, maximum value of modulus of f of z okay that's because in this ball there are always points which have uh, modulus uh, greater than the modulus of f of z naught okay so in any ball uh, the points further up here 
okay if origin origin is here if zero of the complex plane is here then there are always points up here uh, which have greater modulus than f of z naught itself okay so that's the idea so it proves uh, this theorem okay so uh, so maximum modulus principle follows easily by using uh, the previous theorem okay uh, notice that I am calling all these as uh, consequences of open mapping theorem, but I am resorting to uh, this theorem. Well, actually the hard work of the open mapping theorem is captured in this theorem. Okay. So, this is more general, but um, uh, this theorem is the fundamental idea behind the open mapping theorem. Okay. So, uh, coming back to here, um, now we can uh, prove uh, the Schwartz a lemma, which is actually a important consequence to the maximum modulus theorem. Okay. So, uh, we can say something more about uh, the function f okay, and its bounds okay, when, uh, when we have more conditions as follows. Okay. So, the Schwartz lemma is an application. So, uh, here is Schwartz lemma. So, suppose that f is analytic. on uh, B 0 R, a disk of radius R centered at 0 okay, and that f of 0 is equal to 0 okay, and that okay, and modulus of f of z is at most uh, capital M for z belongs to B 0 R bar. Okay. Then, modulus of f of z is less than or equal to m by r modulus of z for mod z less than or equal to r. Okay. So, if the modulus of f of z has a maximum of capital M on the, on the closed disk B 0 r bar, the closure of B 0 r then uh, the modulus of f of z is at most m by r mod z. Okay. So, uh, before proving this let me quickly remark also that this maximum principle tells you that if g is a bounded region, okay, if g is a bounded region uh, it tells you that mod f of z has no maximum inside in the interior of g closure. So, uh, so, m modulus of f of z has to have a maximum uh, on the boundary of uh, g if g is bounded. Okay. Uh, why? Well, modulus of f of z uh, firstly is a uh, continuous function from the from g closure uh, into the complex plane. Uh, so, a continuous function on a compact set. Okay, uh, g I am assuming is a bounded set. Okay, so. Uh, so, uh, on a compact set G closure, uh, f modulus of f has to have a maximum okay? and the maximum cannot occur in the interior of G bar namely G. Okay? So, the, in the, the, the modulus of f has to have a maximum on the boundary uh, whenever G is bounded. Okay? So, uh, Schwartz lemma is uh, uh, something uh, uh, in, in that line, it is telling that if I assume that uh, the modulus um, of f of z is bounded by m on uh, on this closed disk b 0 r bar okay and f of 0 is 0 uh, we can relax that in some sense but uh, at least for this version f of 0 is 0 uh, f is analytic on b 0 r then modulus of f of z is less than or equal to m by r modulus of z for mod z less than or equal to r Okay. So, uh, further actually there is more to this uh, lemma we can say that if, uh, if equality occurs okay, for some z with mod z less than r. Okay. So, in this inequality if equality occurs okay, then uh, there is a real constant.
m such that uh, f of z is actually equal to m z e power i m by r. Okay. So, uh, it is actually the function m z by r up to some rotation e power i m. Okay. Since f of 0 is equal to 0, okay, we have this as well. Okay. So, proof. So, uh, since f of z is uh, 0 or f of 0 is 0, okay, there is uh, an analytic function. g okay, on b 0 r such that uh, f of z is equal to z g of z okay, for all z belongs to b 0 r. Okay. So, by considering the Taylor series expansion around um, uh, around 0 if you wish you can say that there is a function g like that. Okay. The order of 0 at 0 is at least 1. Okay. So, we have this. So, on uh, mod z equals r 1 strictly less than r okay, modulus of g of z okay, is less than or equal. So, on a circle of radius r 1 uh, strictly less than r by using uh, by uh, maximum modulus theorem. Uh, for the function g, okay, uh, what we can say is that the modulus of g of z is less than or equal to uh, modulus of f of z uh, by r 1, okay, which is less than or equal to uh, m by r 1. Okay. So, um, uh, for, for z belongs to b 0 r 1. Okay. Uh, for all the z belongs to b 0 r 1 by maximum modulus theorem we have this. Okay. And uh, now letting, letting r 1 tend to r we can conclude that uh, modulus of g of z is less than or equal to m by r for uh, z belongs to b 0 r. Okay. Um, so, from this we can say that modulus of f of z is less than or equal to m by r modulus of z by substituting what g of z is uh, we get this okay, for modulus of z less than or equal to r z not equal to 0 okay, since we are multiplying by modulus of z. And uh, for z equals 0 uh, this inequality is true. is trivially true because f of 0 is 0. Okay. So, all in all modulus of f of z is less than or equal to m by r mod z for z belongs to b 0 r bar. Okay. Now, uh, if equality occurs, if modulus of f of z uh, happens to be equal to m mod z naught by uh, r f of z naught is equal to m mod z naught by r for some z naught uh, for some z naught in b 0 r. Okay. Then um, mod g uh, attains uh, maximum at some point okay, implies uh, in inside the disk. Okay. So, implies that uh, g is a constant function. That is the only way uh, an interior at an interior point you can have a maximum uh, modulus. Okay. So, g is a constant function. Okay. So, uh, so, so, g of z naught okay, uh, is or sorry g of z. So, f of z looks like c times uh, z okay, for uh, z belongs to b 0 r. Okay. Also, um, 
modulus of c uh, modulus of f of z naught is equal to uh, m times modulus of z naught by r because equality occurred which implies uh, modulus of c times modulus of z naught is equal to uh, m times mod z naught by r which implies uh, uh, modulus of c is m by r. Okay. So, uh, c looks like m by r e power i uh, m for some m. Okay, for some m real. Okay, so uh, so f of z then is equal to m by r z e power i m uh, as claimed. Okay, so that completes the proof of this lemma. Okay, so we can say uh, something more uh, about f of z when we uh, know its bound on the boundary of p zero r, and if f of zero is zero. Okay. So, that is an application of the maximum modulus theorem. 